Hi, the Victor from 60 Minutes, and this is the germ of the book, The Core, Die Stimmen des Abgrunds, in German. And today it's Peter V. Brett we are talking to. Welcome, Peter. Hi, thanks for having Good me. Good to see you again. And I must do something before I introduce you on who you, who you are, what you do. I, I start telling a bit. The first thing we will talk about, hopefully, later on. I was waiting what is happening, and then I like your books and the core, and suddenly it, it was the end. Yeah, so it was a show, and suddenly it was over. So, uh, and now? And about the end now, I want to talk you, to you later on. And now the first thing I want to mention is I realized that something is really fascinating me in your books, something that is missing. And that is, um, you don't need to construct things. You have a natural log logic in the things. And very often, it's disturbing me that things that writers, authors construct something so that it, the story works out. But there's a natural flow, a natural logic, I would call it. Am I right? Or did it happen? Or did you think about it? Was it planned? Uh, I mean, for me personally, I knew how these books were going to end from the start. Um, I knew very much how the first book was going to go. I knew how I wanted the whole story to end. And then it was the stuff in the middle where some of that was building up to it. Um, so a lot of people have told me that as they read the last book, it felt very abrupt. The ending was very sudden. But for me, that I've been living with that ending for 10 years now. So it's a very different experience from my end. Um, I know a lot of authors that just sort of make a story up as they go along and find when they get to the end that the end makes sense because of what has gone before. Uh, I was not talking about the end, about the, the logic. Mm -hmm. The whole story, it worked out there was a logic in the story. You didn't have to do think about things. How do I do that? It works out. You did that, but still... Uh, There, it's a flow in it. Yeah, yeah. And very often you read books, and I like the books, and suddenly something comes, oh, why did he do that? Yeah, why did he, con did he do this construct? It was so easier to, to have a logic, a natural flow. It doesn't feel good in the book. Do you know what I'm I, talking I do, about? I do know what you're talking about, and, and, and I think that is making it clear to the reader who the characters are, how they feel, why they do the things that they do. And, and one of the things that... that I do in my books that I, that's very important to me is each time I introduce a new character, I give you a sense of their history. I let you know where they come from and why they believe what they believe so that when we get to the moment when they have to make a big decision about something, you understand why they choose the way they did. And so that feels very natural. And every once in a while when the plot calls for them to make a decision that's different from the way that I've made them behave, I change the, I change the story to fit that. Because I don't, I, when it feels wrong, when a character does something that feels wrong, it throws you out of the story and it reminds you that you're reading a book and not living something. And so you have to be very careful about that as an author. Yeah. Actually, my question or what I mentioned was a compliment. I'm doing a lot of compliments today because I'm not only talking to, to an other author or an author who wrote the book. I'm talking to someone who wrote one of the books I really love or one of the story I really love. And something you mentioned before, we switched on the cameras, you change a lot in the beginning. Now if you, you've become a pro. You, know, you got used to interviews, you, uh, you seem to enjoy them. In the beginning was our oh, camera and me, and what do I say, you didn't feel too comfortable now. Hey, cool, I like that. Uh, it's definitely gotten easier. I think that writers in general tend to be introverted people. Like we. we gravitate towards writing because we do it alone in our room, you know, like that's, that's the private world we've created because it's more comfortable. And then when you publish your book, suddenly they're like, oh, you also have to go out and talk in front of all these people. And a lot of writers have a really hard time with that. And I was absolutely one of them. I would get nervous a week before I did an interview or, or days before I did an interview. And finally, after doing enough of them, I've started to relax. But as you see, I still can't take a compliment without taking it apart and trying <laughs> to figure out. <laughs> like, there's always a level of insecurity 
I think that'll stay with me, and maybe that's good. Maybe that'll keep me hungry and keep my books uh, grounded, but uh, it's certainly much easier to talk to you and other things than it was 10 years ago when I started. I think it's very important um, to be unsecure if, if you ask yourself, did, is everything right? Did I do it right? Should I do it in a different way? Is you question yourself, as long as you question yourself, you do good work. The moment you stop questioning yourself, I think you are lost. Then everybody who doesn't question himself doesn't, is not able to do any good work anymore. I absolutely agree, and I, and I feel that way. Every time I start a new book, I've written five big novels and uh, four novellas now, and every time I start a book, I, I feel like I, I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't know, like, and I have to remind myself, no, 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 you, you, you do know how to do this. You've done this before, and, I, and as I feel my way through it, I start to gain in confidence as I go, but I question everything up until I turn the book in, but then that's the point you have to reach. You have to reach a point where you say, okay, I've questioned and I've questioned and I've questioned, and now this is the answer, and I'm gonna turn this in and feel confident. And that's hard to do, but I, I, feel, I feel with my books, I don't look back and wish I'd done something differently because I did all of that questioning during the process. Looking back, you said you, you knew how the story would end when you started the first book, and how long did it take you to write all those books? It was Five years, seven, six, seven years. Uh, well, I started work on the first book in 1999. Okay, uh, a bit more. <laughs> so, so it was it was seven years before that first book was sold to a publisher. Um, eight years before it was published. Um, so I had all of that time to do world building, to work on the magic system, to create characters, to create like little minute things about the setting that I was putting together, which made the other books come quicker after I was doing that. So that after that, it was about two years between each book. So I personally have been working on this series for, for 18 years now. Um, but my readers have only been experiencing it since 2008. Um, How do you feel? The moment everything is over, uh, this let, let me say this part is over, and the solution has come, the showdown is over. How did you feel uh, after 18 years? I mean, it's, it's a mixed feeling. I'm sure there's a, there's a German word for, for this. Uh, in English, it's bittersweet. Um, the, this sense that, like, I've been climbing this mountain for 18 years, and I finally got to the top, and there's this amazing view around me, and I feel so proud of what I've done. But I also, like, like, what do I do next? I've spent all of this time doing this one thing, and now it's done. And, and so I, there was an, a, a tremendous relief and a tremendous pride when I got to the end, and I really feel like the story ended the way I wanted it to end and the way I always imagined it would end, and I was very proud of that. But, yeah, it's hard to let it go. Um, but I also like, like, I'm looking forward to doing something new after so long doing the same thing. Yeah, I wanted to come to this later on, but uh, I, I didn't know, I don't know when you finished this book. It's, I think for you it's quite a while. For us it's new, it just has been released. But for you, now you enjoy, now you have to do some promotional tours, some readings, and, and your fans want to talk to you. But uh, the work on the book is over for you quite a while, and I'm sure there's something you will. I don't know what I don't want to talk about what you do, but I'm sure you have found something you what you are doing now, and, and I'm sure you're already working on it. Uh, well, I you can tell how long it is because uh, I turned in the book. I turned in the first draft of the core to my publishers the day before my second daughter was born, and if you look on my Instagram feed, you can see that she's walking now. And so, like, she's the perfect measure of how long it's been since I turned that book in. Um, and so, it's, it's still new here, but for me, like, I finished the, the work a year ago, and emotionally, like, I had my cry over the ending years ago, because I already, I already saw it coming. Um, and so, it, it's a very different experience for me than it is for people who are just in the thick of it right now. Like, I have people 
writing to me saying, oh, I just finished the book and I'm still crying. And, and for me, it's like I had those tears a few years ago. <laughs> um, but I'm already hard at work on a new project. We um, just announced it at the London Book Fair uh, two weeks ago. And I'm really excited because I think it gets it keeps the best of what I've been doing, but also lets me to do things that I've never done before, and so I'm very excited about it. Okay, now I have to ask, what did you announce? Because I didn't know about that. What did you announce as a new project? Before we come back to the book, we want to talk about that. I want to, with this question, I want to finish the future. What did you announce on the London Fair? Okay, so uh, I have just signed a, a three-book deal with Random House and uh, HarperCollins in the UK. Um, for a new uh, series that will take place 15 years after this one ends. So we'll keep a lot of the setting, we'll keep some of the magic. The magic will have changed a little bit after the ending of this book, I won't give anything away. Um, and uh, we'll take all new characters. And so there may be some familiar faces, uh, if anybody lives at the end. Uh, <laughs> There may be some familiar faces, but they will be supporting cast. All of the main characters will be new characters that I'll be introducing and developing as I go. So I get to keep the things that I loved about the original series, but also sort of get rid of the, the baggage of, of who slept with who and who killed whose father. And, and you know, like all of those things I can push aside and start doing something fresh again. And... I'm doing it in such a way that you don't have to have read the other series to read this new series. So younger readers, new readers who, who aren't familiar with my other work can pick up the first book of this new series and just go. The core of the series, we're talking about one of the um, action, it's action, it's fantasy, it's everything. The, um, the characters are developing, they are changing. It's a lot of... Uh, things we actually could discuss about. If you look back, did it work out as you, as you wanted it, as you started it, uh, or did it change? You changed? Did your book, did your story change as well? Or your characters? I, I mean, it, it didn't, it didn't. Uh, there are parts of it that worked out exactly as I planned. And there are some things where, where like, um, there are some big sort of emotional changes and, and philosophical changes for the main characters, particularly as we get towards the ending and they start to realize things about the world that they hadn't, know, hadn't known and they start to question their own beliefs about what reality is and what their religions tell them. Um, and that was something that I had planned long ago. But as it developed in the story, I, like, I had to adapt it to make it fit. And I'm very happy with the way it worked out, but that was something that I was very scared about making actually happen in the story. Um, but of course, the characters developed in ways that I didn't expect over the course of the story. And, and every once in a while, I came to something in the plot that didn't fit anymore. You know, I, I, the story I, I tell most often, and I probably, I might have told this the last time we did an interview, uh, in the, the fourth book, The Skull Throne, much of the plot of the book hinges on uh, one of the characters, Leisha Paper, telling a lie. And when I got to that point in the story, the character was just, it was almost as if she turned and looked at me and said, I, I don't do that. I, I'm not going to say that. And it just felt so, so out of character for her to lie that I had her just blurt out the truth. And then I had to rewrite the plot to make it work. Um, you come across things like this as you go and you have to be willing if you come up with a better idea to make that change or else we have what you talked about where, where a character does something that feels wrong and it throws you out of the story. One thing that's for me very important is the how people change. How your heroes, your characters change during that's a permanent, permanently they're changing, their developments. I think it was very important for you. It's one of the messages that is behind. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I try to show that by, by introducing the characters as children and then having an event. You know, there'll, there'll be one way and then something will happen to them, usually something involving a demon attack that changes their life forever. And they, then they see the world a different way and they start approaching the world like that 
But then as they grow up, they realize that the world is more complex than they, than they first believed, and they're forced to keep changing their perspective a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until you get towards the end and you look back over their development and realize that they're so different from the way they started. But I mean, that's what life is like, really. And, and so I, I try my best to, to reflect. Uh, look, if I think back to the things that I believed when I was 18, they're very different from the things that I believe now. <laughs> oh, we have to discuss about that. For me, it was a bit, I, uh, we have to concentrate on the demons that are our real enemies and enemies. I would love if the world, if we as human beings would think like that, but very often we don't. In your book, it works out, people change, they start believing, they start, they start ha having doubts, whatever it is, that doesn't happen in, in reality. There's something, when I read your, your book, that's what's in my heart as well, I wish it would happen this way, that we know who is the enemy. That were my thoughts. That's why you said this happens in reality. We are changing, we are getting new experiences, but uh, if you look at the political landscape, we are not. Well, I, I mean, it's interesting that you say that because much of the first book hinged on my experiences in New York during September 11th, yeah. where you know I felt very safe in New York. You know, like America had never been attacked, and I felt very safe in New York. And then one day, you know, the subways aren't working, and we can see from my office window these clouds of smoke, and there's panic everywhere, and everyone's scared, and that absolutely changed my outlook on the world forever and took away that sense that, that I was safe. And I think that I'm fortunate that I got to adulthood without feeling that way, where there's people all over the world who have to learn that lesson as children. Um, and so, and even we as a nation, we were so scared by that that we made a lot of choices and, and, and looked at the world in a certain way that politically we made some bad decisions, some really bad decisions. And over the years- We all do, we, we all do, the whole world. Yeah, and you can understand how we got there, but it takes real courage to look at that and say, okay, I didn't entirely understand the problem, and now I've done my research and I understand the problem better, and we need to change our approach. And I think that we did that, we've done that to an extent, um, we may be regressing a little bit right now. Uh, but uh, maybe we should not go too deeply into that. But I do no, think no. That, that, that certainly real world experiences alter our perspective on life all the time. All when I read all this, I thought, I wish it would be like that. That we understand and that suddenly we realize we have to change and we have, we have to take a different point of view and everything. That's what I liked about that book and something that I wish it would happen right now. That's why I mentioned this. Um, I don't know when I asked you, um, if you look back for you, it's a long time now and your children have started to walk and this children in the book the characters, they start, they left you the house. They live a life on their own now. And if you look back, what are you proud of? I asked you this question the first time, now the third time we are talking. We had a short interview and I asked, what are you proud of? What, what is the character you started to love if you look back? We were thinking, I, I don't know, I can identify myself with this character. Is there something or someone? I mean, I, I try to keep my characters separate from real people because I think that that's a trap and that's something that, that uh, beginning authors will do that. And, and there's nothing wrong with doing that, but for me, I always felt like they're individuals in their own right and I don't want to base them on people in the real no, world. No, not but real people, not real people. They are your children, you invented yeah, them. They are. And they are. They are your children. And what is a child you're proud of? All, all of them are children <laughs> I'm proud of. All of them, okay, like, you love all your children. when we get, when we get, it, it's, I mean, if you're asking who are my favorites, it's different, but, but certainly in the core, every one of my major characters 
gets a moment to shine, gets a moment to show like, here's how, I, here's how far I've come, here's what I've grown into, this is what I can do now. I, you know, you remember me when I was a child and I didn't know anything and I couldn't do anything and now I'm at the height of my power and maybe it's still not enough, but they each have that moment. And that was something that was really amazing to finally get to, to take these, these characters. Every one of them begins as a helpless child and then you see them at the height of the conflict and they're all heroes and you feel it more and you're more proud of it because you know where they came from. Whereas if I had just started with adult characters who were already had strength and, and courage and agency, it wouldn't be nearly as moving to get to that point. Um, and I, look, I feel that way about my own children too. Like my, my older daughter uh, was born the same year The Painted Man came out. And so again, um, I was incredibly proud of her the day she was born. I was like, wow, you had a hard day, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and yet, every day, uh, I feel that more so. I mean, she's writing books of her own now, and, and I'm so incredibly proud of that and, and thrilled to, to get to read and see what her imagination is like. And it's, it's, it's interesting how that, there's a lot of similarities between my, my characters and my real children, but it's true. Yeah, children. If I think of my child, then <laughs> he's very different from me. In this, uh, from me, and, and on the other hand, he does the same. We influence our children. Yeah. We influence our children, and they behave sometimes like we would behave. On the other hand, they have a life of their own, and, and uh, he's still developing. He needs still some years, and he's 18 now, and he will be a man one day, and a man of his own. Still, it feels strange. But I, I, I can imagine how you feel. Um, no, a very simple question. When you finished the story, how, how did it change your real life? Suddenly, before you started a new project, or I don't know if you already work on this, but it's your profession, it's your job, and suddenly, uh, nothing to do. I've got a lot of time to relax, a lot of time to do this. Did it change your life? Did, was your family happy? Do you remember I told you I had a baby the next day? Like, my, there was no time to relax. I haven't relaxed in, in 15 months. You know, like, so my life, it, it was interesting. My, my life changed drastically, but because I got to the end of the series, because I turned in the book before the baby came, I got to be a real father for that, you know, the first few months. Uh, my, my girlfriend was off from work for maternity leave and I got to be off too and the two of us got to just share in, in, in the panic and wonder of having a newborn baby um, and then uh, I did my, my book tours and I did my promotion for the book and I, I had to um, stay up all night for a couple of months doing edits to make sure that the book was done but then once that was finished, we hadn't yet signed the contracts for the new series. And I ha I've had this period for the last few months where I, I keep telling people I'm out of work, you know, <laughs> but between projects. Um, but it's been good because I, I'm home and I get to spend that time with my, my daughter. And um, like I, it's been something that's been really like important to, to share and uh, but at the same time, I've been in the back of my head planning this new thing. I, I already knew what I, when I when I finished the last book, I already knew what I was going to do next, and so I just had to sell it. And now that people have finally uh, uh, bought into it, now I'm ready to start work again. As soon as this, as soon as I get back from this trip, I'm starting in on the new series. Something you mentioned, if I remember right, but uh, I have to ask you now. I am doing my job as a journalist. Will there be a movie? Uh, I mean, I can't say. Uh, the, the books have been optioned. Um, we have a wonderful script team, script team at uh, Dark Light Entertainment that are adapting this, the books um, into screenplays for a television show. And we are actively shopping that around to try and find a, a production company that will take it on. And we've certainly gotten some interest, but until such time as... Uh, you know, somebody hands me a contract, 
I can't say for sure. So we're doing our best to make it into a TV show, and I really hope that it happens, but I can't guarantee anything. We have to do some promotion into this camera. The core, that my dear colleagues, my dear uh, producing company, this is one of the best stories you can have for your TV show, so it would be stupid not to do a movie and not to do a TV show about this book. The Core, Die Stimme des Abgrunds. Yeah, I have to say, for your book, thank you. It was uh, very entertaining, and it was a lot of uh, okay, fascinating. And what is going to happen now? And I knew what was uh, somehow I knew what was happening. Everything was, but we, you don't know exactly who will. To whom will happen what? Yeah, we all know something will happen, and not everything will be a good end or a, a wonderful end. And uh, thank you very much. It was so entertaining, and I'm, I'm missing it. Uh, I said I was disappointed when I when I stopped. I said <laughs> I had really the feeling, and now, and I, that was really crazy. I never had that before. Well, thank you so much. That, that no, really no, means a lot I to me. I thought you were the second one. I had it with one, one time I had it before. For me, the second uh, fantasy author, author. The other one was a German one, Richard Schwarz. Mm. He, he's got the same, let's say, logic behind yeah. his, everything. And, and, and then I thought, what was what's happening now? Well, I mean, like... Uh, Sorry, but not sorry. Like, I'm, gl I'm glad that I made that, made you feel that way. And, and like, you, you want, as an author, that's the dream, is to get people to, to, want, to, to, to want, want more. more. Um, there is a little bit more. Um, there's one more uh, short novella called Baron. Uh, it comes out in September in English. And uh, Heine uh, is already at work translating it. I've already sent it to my translator. So uh, it takes place at the same time as the core um, in a slightly different place. And so there's a little bit more if you want just like one, like, like a little bit of dessert at the end, uh, that's still on its way, so. Peter, I think that's a good point for say, to say thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And the core, and really looking forward to what is coming next. It's not only the, not the small novel, it's uh, what is happening in the world. The world is very complex and, and It's very interesting what will happen. Thank you for the entertainment for of the last years, and thank you for this interview. I hope we will meet again soon when the next series starts. I will absolutely be back. Thank you. Thank you. Peter V. Brandt.